Welcome to another episode of Real Estate Investing Explained. Here's today's question. If the audience listening today wants to begin implementing a similar strategy to yours in the same asset class, the multifamily asset class, what should they look for in properties that are potential acquisition targets? So there are a few things that I typically look for, and I think a lot of the uh, investors that execute the same strategy that I do, I mean, they all look for very similar things. Mainly, it's deferred maintenance or mismanagement of the actual property. And that could be evidenced by a roof that's bad that needs to be replaced, but the current owner doesn't have the money to replace it, or just really below market rents and tenants that aren't paying, and a manager or an owner that is fed up with managing the property. I think those two areas are where you're going to find most of the opportunity. Uh, deferred maintenance that maybe is just too expensive for the current owner or landlord to handle. And then just a mismanagement of the assets. So basically just, you know, the number one thing we look for is below market rents or just really high expenses or just poor tenant quality in a building that has potential to have a higher tenant quality. So when I'm looking at a deal, those are the two most prevalent things I look for. And then there are some other ones beyond that, such as the opportunity to maybe creatively finance it or do the deal in a way that makes sense outside of just doing a standard put some money down and buy it. The most prevalent one being owner financing. You know, That's another segment to a deal that actually makes a lot more deals make sense that otherwise wouldn't if that wasn't part of the options to finance it. So I think those two, the deferred maintenance and mismanagement of tenants are the significant ones. And then an ability to creatively finance would be the third. Yeah. That owner financing piece, that's so interesting. I really like that strategy. I haven't implemented it in my real estate business yet, but we had Chad Carson from Bigger Pockets on the show just a few episodes ago. And he talked a lot about seller financing. And back on Millennial Investing, we also had Gabriel Hamill on the show. He's a big proponent of seller financing. He really likes it. So it's one of those things that I'm really looking to implement in my business myself. That's all for this episode of Real Estate Investing Explained. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook or subscribe to our YouTube channel to get even more free content.